നമസ്കാരം നമസ്കാരം so welcome to our kalanilayam dramas inspiration series venkatesh we are so honored to have you here thank you so much my pleasure and thank you for the invitation uh actually venkatesh can you just tell me about your journey yeah i will do yeah so hi namaskar to everyone and my name is venkatesh i identify myself as an androgynous gay man and my preferred pronouns are he him and his so uh, coming to the journey uh, i think uh, i will speak in english and hindi so let's make it bilingual if it's okay uh yeah okay or english because or most of our yeah they they may not be okay. that comfortable i'm okay with it i'm okay with it thank you cool. so my journey started i think 12 years back when i was 16 years uh, Uh, i started getting attracted to was same sex individuals that is male when i was in my school days and but those days um, i think uh, we didn't had that much of gadget access or anything or um, any scope where we could interact with people like minded people so for me i it was very common to see um, a, a, like a girl holding hands of a boy and or, and they're walking on opposite gender so for me it was something like no that is not something which i am attracted to i feel like doing it so there was a lot of things which i wanted to talk with someone which i wanted to share with someone but i think um, i didn't have that opportunity i didn't have the scope uh, i didn't have the people whom i could uh, talk with so this phase continued for almost one and a half years or so and i think at the age of late 17s or so i started getting uh, Uh, access to a home pc which my mom purchased at that point of time and uh, i think if you remember we had this orkut those days yeah, yeah, so orkut yes. so once you log into orkut uh, you will find this um, uh, on the right hand side there was this friends and down you had this groups uh, like which were correct, part correct. of like the yahoo messenger group so there was a couple of groups so i think that was one my first instance where i got across couple of uh, lgbtqia groups i think that point of time the term lgbt was not very familiar to me as well so it was like a like minded group where i came across couple of individuals there are a lot of people whom i chatted with but still uh, it was a lot of inhibition a lot of uh, scarcity uh, uh, there are a lot of things um, which i would be scared upon because those people are strangers how would they be and like that it went on i think um, but uh, i started interacting with one individual um, who was studying with iit that point of time and he was in, uh, from calcutta as well so um, i think uh, we decided to meet upon one is on, on his visit back to calcutta and that time i was 18 almost uh, and we met one day and that day that those days we didn't have this uh, cafe coffee days and also it was like a chai kadda yeah, right. the road side telas or something we got and i think he identifies himself as a gay man so he was very sure because he was much elder to me and he was he was sure about his sexuality so he answered me lot of things but somehow it was not very accepting to me because i think the self acceptance was very important and that i was not having that point of time so i think i gave my time to myself and um, in the meanwhile the journey continued from the age of 16 and i think age of late 19s my mom being a mother i think they understand everything it's at times is just spoken of at times they don't it's simply like that so i think she started understanding it and she one point of time she asked me like if i identify as a homosexual individual but i was not sure so i didn't come out to her because uh, you don't know what would her reactions be what would the family's reaction be so i thought that let me first understand what sexuality or what gender do i identify myself so let me uh, i need to accept myself then only i can come out because if i don't accept myself my journey is going to be much difficult so likewise it went on and at the age of 20 i was sure no i am just attracted towards men and um, i identify as a gay man so uh, one very day in some pretext of a conversation we were having uh, i told my mom that yeah i identify as a gay man i think there was a pin drop silence for a while and uh, later my mom is like yeah i just wanted to hear from the horse's mouth because i knew it it's just like i wanted to hear from you but still you have lot of inhibitions at point of time because i was not independent uh, there might be lot of things like you might be thrown out of the house and all so these things always scared me but um i found that my mom was accepting see you can't expect that she will be totally accepting in from the very day one right because 
uh, when a mother raises you, when, a, when your parents raise you, they are raised in a heteronormative society where they always see a boy getting married to a girl, a girl getting married to a boy. So these things were there. So for them, if I took, I always believe that see, if I took my four years to understand my sexuality, so I need to give them time as well. So because this giving them time is also required because they need to understand it's not easy. We might come out in a day, but they also need to get uh, used to it. They I need to understand it because these were not very common. These are not they, these were always there, but it was not spoken of. They were not used to knowing it. So I think I gave time, and uh, slowly, slowly, my mom started understanding me, and that was my I think initial journey which started with. Okay, so how was the acceptance in your? I'm so happy that your mother was so accepting. Like generally, that doesn't happen, uh, unfortunately. Good. Uh, so, how was the uh, reaction with the other members in your family, and how did you manage that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I didn't come out to my dad for sure because he was not here at that point of time, and my sister was also not in Calcutta, so she was studying uh, outside the city. So I think she was not. So she has never seen my coming out journey and all. And I think this phase went on. I think slowly my dad comes to know from somehow from my mother. My sister comes to know somehow. So it was not that they were not very accepting, but I think they also took some time before they accepted me. So when did you start, you know, uh, accepting yourself and, you know, to change, to dress the way that you like, you love dressing? So uh, uh, at the age of 20, which I said that I accepted myself who I am, I identify as a gay man, I accepted myself, uh, but uh, my journey continued at the age of 22. So there was a uh, time when I started identifying as an androgynous gay man, like my gender expression androgynous. So you can see me uh, on my beard, I'm wearing nail paints, I'm wearing rings, accessories, earrings, uh, lipstick, or bindi. So it's my masculinity with effeminity. So if we actually see, all non-living things are gender neutral it's we the society we the people have labeled everything like we have labeled uh, do you think a sari is also a cloth and today i'm wearing a kurta this is also a cloth this is just to cover my body so if you see the previous days the maharajas the kings used to wear much more jewelry than what i am wearing presently as well the queen is to just cover themselves is to use the cloth to a sari to cover themselves and if you see the heels were first worn by men then later the girls started wearing so like that if you see so we have started labeling every non-living thing for me all non-living things are gender neutral if you see a table even if hindi i'm not very very well versed with hindi so um, chan, Suraj, table, everything we label, karta, karti, and all these things. But who have done this? We, the people, have done it. Today, for example, if you are going to a birthday, so for example, in your family, a five year old child's birthday is it, so you are going. So, how do we purchase a birthday gift? Usually, what we, the maximum people we do, okay, if it's for a girls. Girl, Blue we for boys, a, yeah. Bar, if it's a yeah. girl, we will buy a Barbie doll. But Barbie do we really doll, yeah, know correct. if they don't really want to play with the same? No, it's just correct. we want to do it because we are assigning it like this is the same. So likewise, for me, I have always preferred these are just a gender neutral thing. It's just we have labeled it. And I always prefer wearing it. I love to wear it first. Most importantly is that I don't, it's not about breaking stereotypes. It's for me that I love to wear it. That is much more important. And then, of course, I want to break the stereotypes as well. And like today, for me, who are seeing here, if at least out of 10, one people get sensitive, that's very important for me. Because these are still a taboo. People don't talk about it till day. Correct. So how was the acceptance uh, in the society? Uh, did the society, uh, you know, seclude your family? Or were they uh, behaving in a very different manner to your mother and your family? Was that well, yeah. See, of course, uh, I won't say that 100% out of 100, 100 would be accepting for sure. It's not easy journey. So it's not a uh, struggle only for me. Of course, it's for my family as well, because there are people, there are the relative society who started um, mentioning a lot of things. But I think um, somewhere at the end of the day, my mom knew that it was my son's happiness. See, I'm the only son of the family. I have an elder sister, though. But still, it's that she knew, knew that I don't want my son to get married to a girl. So there's no point to that. So when I know it, I accept it. And so there have been instances where family were uh, are not accepting the extended family members. Uh, and uh, there have been uh, relatives, there have been society who started questioning my mother. What is his way of dressing? What are the things? But I, what I told my mom is that 
it's just what my happiness which matters the most of course i respect them but is that they can't interfere in my personal life whether they, i don't want to interfere in, as uh, like like what i'm not interfering in their personal life so like what i don't want their interference in my personal life about or to judge me like what i am wearing so these things have to be i was very clear and i made clear to my parents as well that See, you can't make everyone happy. If you get, the, if you, for example, if a marriage is happening, if a Ambani or some Bachchan's family or someone get married, there will be someone who will be saying there is not. This is not up to the ma, right? So you can't make everyone happy. What matters is my happiness. Exactly. So when did you uh, start? You know, so you you had this journey and you accepted yourself, and you know people gradually started accepting you. So when did you realize that you must work for a cause? Okay, so I think this was soon after I came out to my mother. I think uh, my journey always I wanted is that uh, because uh, there were many my you can, which you could understand is my parents. My mom was very accepting, and so did my family yes. was as yes. well. So what was what I felt is there are so many people in the society who are really not able to come out or who are really not able to be the voice for themselves because. Still, there is a lot of inhibitions, a peer pressure, society pressure. Though someone wants, it's not easy. I always say, see, today my mom was accepting, but uh, you can't expect everyone to be accepting. You know, it's in a in a nation like India, it's very difficult if you identify one from the alternative sexualities and gender. It's not easy. So. always i wanted to be the voice of such unheard people i didn't i don't wanted to be part of any organization by choice uh, and it is what i wanted to do in an individual capacity what i could do i started doing in that way okay so uh, i heard about i read about one incident where you rescued one girl so what was that uh, all about and what is she doing right now Okay, so this incident, I think, so these incidents keeps on happening. I have been doing actively working for long years. So one of these incidents, which first time a case came to me that this individual, that this girl was in a plus two high school and she was appearing for exams, and immediately I think I got a call. I was in I was in Chandigarh at that point of time. So this girl tells me that her family comes to know about the sexuality of um, being in a relationship with another girl, and um, uh, what they did is they locked her ten days. Uh, Ten consecutive days with ten different guys in a room. Uh, just uh, that, that is which we call as a corrective rapes. So your own family members lock uh, this girl, poor girl, uh, uh, and get her thinking that if she is uh, getting sexually intimated with a guy, so she will turn to be straight. And that's not possible, right? It's not possible. This is a corrective rape done by the family members uh, themselves. So uh, I was outstationed. So I tried to connect with someone, and later we come on, and I think now she's happy because it's been long time now. I'm not in written touch up personally, but yeah, later till the time I had her, and she was doing well. Okay. So uh, now, Ankitesh, what are these uh, categories in the LGBTQIA um, group? What are the different categories? See, it's LGBTQIA plus so lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, intersex. So, so lesbian is a, a girl getting attracted uh, to another say, to our same gender. Like a gay, like I identify as a gay man. So it's like me. I am a biologically born um, uh, man, a boy, and I identify myself as a man. My gender expression is androgynous, but I get attracted. I'm attracted only towards men. Uh, so there's trans. There are people who are. Uh, who are born in a um, biologically born girl, but they feel that they are a woman. They feel like a girl, so they start transitioning. So it's a trans woman. So, so likewise, there are biologically born girls, uh, uh, and they feel like they are. Uh, um, they feel like a man, so they are trans man. So there are there's a lot. It's not only L it's like up to LGBT. There are a lot more. I think, and it's like a, the long, long term. Okay. So, uh, what are the major stereotypes that you think are still there in the society? uh so stereotypes are there a lot it's not only about lgbt if you see whatever is out of the boxes that is the problem in us in our nation in our society today uh, just for an example do we talk about uh, uh, this menstruation it's it's not spoken of talking about yes. if you talk about the word sex it's a taboo 
what is the problem talking about sex what are talking about problem about menstruation today we don't talk about it i find it very weird because we don't talk it's in the present 2020 also there is so lack of conversation which happens and i feel um, likewise lgbt is one of the cases there are a lot of things a lot of things which are not spoken of and people often say me like okay you are a hijra but they don't really understand what hijra is hijra and trans are different hijra is a community it's a profession so they don't understand these things we need to we need to talk them i what i feel is we need to talk more about about it and there's a lot of taboo stereotype which keeps on that okay ye to alag hai matlab and mainly what is that like matlab if you identify one from the lgbtqi community then only you are a hijra chhatka so that is these mm. things but they don't understand i think and that's our responsibility as a member of the community or as an ally if there are many people who supports the community you don't need to be a dog to be a dog lover right so it's likewise if you want to support a cause you know you don't need to be a one from the community you can support it in any which ways so likewise so there are so many allies i've been uh, today uh, who have been supporting the community i think it's our responsibility we can't expect everyone to be understanding but it's our responsibility to sensitize them okay so uh, what activities do you do to do that sensitization among people Uh, see, one thing is that on a daily basis, whenever I travel, whenever there are people who have any doubts, because it's always see, today if I go out like this, obviously people would be asking me things or people would be looking at me, and at times I I prefer to talk about it. See, today main thing is that I don't really need to go and tell everywhere that oh hey hi I'm Venkatesh I'm gay. And today, uh, no one tells that okay hi I am like I am Anuj and I'm straight. They don't say that. My my sexuality is not my identity, right? So okay. likewise, it's just like what I feel is that. But I still say that I am an activist working for this cause, LGBTQI community, because still there is uh, not much people who are speaking of it, and there are many people uh, still having of the community. They feel scared to come out. The reason because. it's we the society are labeling them i find for example i will share one two examples for example today we are a group of four five friends and there is one from the northeast you will often find someone would be saying for example i am telling you oh dekho he is a chinky this what chinky this racism comment to me what happens is that i might tell you but you don't know what that person is going through or today, yes, for example right. you are telling me in a group of four five friends that oh dekho wo chakka hai wo hijra hai so today mm-hmm. for example i am a discreet person what happens to me is that okay you are making me more in the closet because i am feeling scared if i come out so you or people will be the one who will be making fun of me so I, what i always say to my friends i to say to people today if there is a group of friends also if such comments are made we need to raise a voice and say no you can't say like that then will they will many people say nahi nahi hum to mazak ke liye bol rahe we are saying for fun fun is fun but these things today if you stop them once the next day when they try to say that they will think before telling because i think these right. things are important because there there might be out of five friends you don't know someone from me from the community today on my face it's not written i am gay and uh, today on your face it's not written you are uh, you are gay you might be gay you might be straight i can't assume you no. right it's your own sexuality yes. own gender yes. so i can't judge you so and 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 it's a very wrong the one of the main stereotype is that okay if you are wearing accessories you become gay no it's very wrong notion that uh, you don't have to wear accessories or i have so many friends from the cisgender heterosexual community men i would talk i'm talking about who rape sari Just, and and it said they just like it it's not that they don't they're they are gays or they are bisexual or they're trans no they are cis hetero uh, heterosexual men who has a partner who is a girl but they still rape sarees so is it that you can't judge someone on the basis of their uh, clothing or on the basis of their accessories or today since i am wearing this or you can't say no he is gay he he might not be also so these things we need to talk about so how can uh, what age will one really come to know about their sexual orientation or when will they really realize about it um, you know that aspect see it's it's, it's very it's because uh, always we'll try to nullify that aspect no we'll whenever okay. such a thought comes we'll try to nullify so when can no, someone that. really understand um, i understand that so see for me it's very uh, many people has been uh, in that phase from a very young age for me it was uh, at the age of 16 which i started getting under, understanding myself and i think totally un- accepting was in 20 so this would be i i can't say that no this like you can be at the age of 8 years or you can be at the age of 5 years this is a very uh, 
it's very it differs from per individual to individual so i think it's so that uh, but what what i always wanted because it's when your parents main thing is that what i felt is my family was the backbone so many family are not but these conversations there should be in schools still uh, what there should be a safe space where someone should come out they, they can come out if they want to or they can talk with because if you tell in the family there might be problems so there should be a safe space or we try to build a safe space that where people can approach us or talk with us or we can connect with them to organizations who they are working who are working with the community so these things because i have seen many friends who identified themselves who are, who knew that you know they are attracted towards men since the age of 9 10 or they used to like men but they didn't knew the term that no we are gay but yeah they used to feel that we are into same sex people individuals but for me it was at the 60 and there are many who are who does at the age of 20 30 I have a friend. Uh, she, uh, she's a trans woman. She's from abroad. I'm not naming the country and all. So she uh, she is a biologically born man. Uh, she got married. Uh, she had like when he was a she was a he. Then he got married. Mm -hmm. uh, he had three children. And then at the age of 40 or 41, uh, he started transitioning for from uh, uh, and now. Uh, he identifies her, her now. Now it's a she. So she now she's a trans woman. So her journey was after forty years. So it's a very fluid thing. It's not that today for me it might be at the age of sixteen. For you it might be at the age of five, ten, fifteen, twenty, whatever it is. So these are very uh, fluid things. Gender and sexuality is very fluid. Today I might be identifying as a gay man. I never know after ten years down the line I might identify myself as a trans woman. Or I might be identify myself as a bisexual man. So this is a very fluid thing. Okay, so uh, is there a possibility that one person goes without, you know, realizing that aspect? See, it's not possible. See, everyone knows it, but it's just that um, many people are scared to accept themselves. What I again mentioned a while back, because it's just the society, the peer pressure, the lot of things which makes them not to come out or not to accept themselves. Because I have found so many people in my life till date. who don't want to accept themselves it's just that they don't want to they want to but their pressure makes them scared to do that so these things there so everyone goes through the phase of course today if you are if i am attracted at the age of 16 i got i am attracted towards same sex individuals so that's the phase but i took four years like mujhe i understood after at the age of 18 when i met someone i started talking with him i understood things so these things i think everyone goes through it's just like someone might not able to speak off because of the pressure and all and someone i, I think today in 2020 still we have that opportunity we have that scope to uh, connect with people and organizations who are working and all so uh, if someone okay um, is because of all these peer pressures and societal uh, stereotypes and taboos if a person who suppresses all these and gets married to um, like married to an opposite gender as the normal norm of the society is it possible for that person to suppress that forever or uh, is it possible for him to be in that relationship how is that again see that's also a very uh, difficult question and to answer but many people are as you mentioned they are getting because married can they be ever because there is a uh, thing that many people think that it's something that you are creating even yeah. though so yeah can you just speak about that so i understand that so many people as you mentioned they get married to the opposite the opposite gender just because of the family pressure and all but one thing is that uh, what i always say is see getting married or not getting married is a human right i understand you might uh, for example i will just say i'm just taking an example with no offense for okay. example if i see so i'm just taking an example so for example guys see you are there uh, and uh, today what happens so if you want to get married or not it's your choice right and yeah. i always say is that fin being financially independent is one of the most important things today for example if i am financially independent and you are my sister and you are forcing me to get married and i don't want to get married see today and then what i have see if i am financially but i have an opportunity to to move out or i can I, or not getting married or one thing is that if i know that you might not be accepting my sexuality uh, i think if you if you feel that i don't want i don't want to come out to you but there are many other reasons which you can which i can give to you for not getting married right i can say no i am not financially stable i don't want to get married if you know that if i know that if i my coming out to you might be a problem so there can be other reasons but many people still after knowing that that 
and they they i i know very many people that who can actually avoid this because they are independent they can a lead a life by themselves but they are scared they are still scared no we want our family we don't want to uh, lose our family they end up in getting married and later i have seen i have seen many people who have been living a life happily with their children with their family one with their spouse and all and but there are many other cases when they couldn't continue the marriage as well so it's a both sided so it's not easy but yeah you can see see your sexuality and think how many people suppress it because they feel they have a spouse they suppress it many people can't do it they want a physical intimacy with the same gender if they want to they go out but somewhere there are things there are both ways there are people who are living a life also there are people who have been caught off also or who can't carry off that marriage as well okay so uh, like what about uh, having a child uh so how possible that is um, when it is when it comes to um you know the same gender or trans uh, men uh, yeah so for trans women adoption thing and these mm-hmm. all are adoption but these laws are still it's uh, see these laws are there are long lot of things laws which we want so first mm-hmm. we don't have the marriage rights only that's most form mm-hmm. of thing we don't have a marriage rights so mm-hmm. uh same gender marriage is not allowed so there are things i think uh, from uh, me if i want to also i have to adopt so i think these laws will come with i hope in the due course of time it will take time it's not a one day change right so at least uh, to 10 years before we never used to have such conversation over live sessions but i think uh, in this pandemic i saw so many people have t- contacted me or we have been in interactive instagram live facebook live sessions still let's see this is a positive note that today you sitting back in kerala i sitting back in calcutta we are having this interactive live session on the community so that is a that is an acceptance of course which comes up but we can't expect everything to be in a day right so it will take time and i think our next generation who would be there who are upcoming growing and we as a community member or people who are allies today you are there if it's our responsibility to educate it's not that you have to be from the community to educate you can educate our child because i always say many people that today you never know what your child might come up and tell to you after 10 years or 15 years yes so yes, yes. It, it, because it's, it's very obvious right today you never know today what i never know if i have a son who whom i'm adopt who uh, for example if i have adopted someone after 15 years he comes and tells me that he is from the community right today for example if i'm a, cis, a cisgender person and if the person comes so it's our responsibility to be uh, understanding to understand it you might not know everything but you can try to know everything you can learn it you can know about it okay. you can community okay so i uh, know uh, another thing like uh, how about the child bearing capacity for a trans man trans woman will will that person be you know completely a man with all the reproductive uh, capabilities uh, but child bearing wouldn't be possible okay then um, what all changes do you think are needed in the society uh, see society required the society needs a lot of changes if we talk about it see uh, now i would it's very it feels immense pleasure to say kerala has been one of the trans friendly states you can see in kerala so many trans people are given uh, opportunities in uh, metro, kerala kochi metro i found and there are a lot more lot more but still there are so much job lack of opportunities for uh, people uh, of the community and especially when it comes to trans intersex people and all because see today i identify as a male person so my gender is male so for example today if someone is female uh, their gender is female but there are trans people who has a problem with their uh, gender identities uh, uh, so they are like treated no tum to male you are not a male you are not a female what are these words are being used so but where do the people go where these individuals go see the the nalsa judgment was passed i think 6 years before in 2040 it's been 6 years down the line it took so much of time for the government even if you find the indian railways have started for example the male female and the other trans other gender yes, trans yes, column, i think 3 years before but the judgment was passed in 2014 and if you see the banking forms everything so they have started much later after 2014 much later so what was these uh, where was this judgment after being passed where were they why were they were not being uh, uh, applicable to all these things so these are there there is a lot laws can be passed but society changes needs to be there right today when many people say the trans people are begging on the signals what i always say is there are cisgender heterosexual people also begging in the signals there are child also begging in the signals but whom do we target it's always the nature we target the uh, minorities we target the dalits we target the muslims we target the lgbtqi community why do we have to target such people 
why why can't we treat everyone equally today if you and many people have seen they don't want to give money but uh, they will say that uh, why, don't, why don't you go and work somewhere see i am telling you see out of 10 people 10 might not be interested to work there might be two people who are really interested to work it's not easy standing in the signal uh, I will just share an example. Yesterday, I was going for a Halloween party. So I was in one of the signals and there's this trans woman who was uh, um, um, asking for money. Then I said, like, Behan, why do you ask money from me also, Behan? So I just started talking, conversing very interactively. And then she said, okay, which side are you going? I said, I'm going somewhere. On, I mentioned the place. Then she said, can you drop me? I said, yeah, she only please board. So I asked her to board the cab. Then when we were going in the cab for 15 minutes of journey, we were talking. Then I think we both were telling the same thing. See, it's not easy standing in the signals, begging in the scorching heat or in the rain just to go at each and every car and just ask for money. It's not easy. But why do they do? They have to do for eating and living. They need money. We all need money for eating and living and we don't have that. So if they don't have that, they are bound to do uh, begging. They are bound to do sex work. People say sex work uh, is a till a taboo. Why sex work is a taboo? Sex work is a work. Sex work is work and people need to understand it because no one wants to sell their body. They do it just because they want some money and they need to survive, right? Still, we don't talk about it. So I always say, people who are doing sex work, I never discourage them. I say like, okay, you are doing it. It's If it's you are doing by your own choice and consent, there is no harm in it. No. You can be, there are many people who say that, see, he is uh, from, uh, or she is from a very well-off family, but uh, they are engaged in sex work. I say, if any individual, it's not about class, it's not about caste, anything. If an individual is doing into sex work, it's by their own choice. We have no question to ask them, no, why they are doing. There are many people who say that, oh, they are from very rich family, but still, uh, they want to do it. I say, like, why do we have to care for it? Whoever does it, let's accept it and let's be non-judgmental. Sex work is work and we need to accept it. And likewise, when these people beg on the signals, it's not easy for them. So they keep on doing it and people start telling them. Then I say, see, if you want to bring a change, why don't you bring a change from yourself first? Today, I can't expect, no, if Gayatri is giving a job opportunity to someone, then only I will give. Why don't I myself start that opportunity and then bring a change? It's very easy to say, no, but you give an opportunity, no? See, there, and at least you might not know the community very well, but you can approach people who can really give people. There are so many people who are working with the company. There are so many trans people who are working with different organizations. There is a need of job. Everyone needs it. But yeah, there's this thing is there. This when you go to education system, many people are just bound to leave their education because of their, uh, see, once you go to school today, on a daily basis, if you are being targeted and bullied, saying that chakka, hijra, meetha, gur, uh, these things, uh, then where do these people go? They also need to, they also want, when we talk about equality, let's be equal, right? Why do you have to go with the gender thing? And uh, and many people, I think I think recently this um, uh, there's this uh, newly opened education institution which is going to come up in Uttar Pradesh for only for the trans individuals. So there are still many people who started saying that see, aap log to equality ke baat kar, you are talking about equality and you are making a different uh, educational institution for the trans. But my point is, then why there is a different education institution for the girls? Why there is a different education institution for the boys? So I find if there can be for boys and girls, why can't it be for trans as well? Because if they are coming to boys' school or if they are coming to girls' school, they are being bullied. So if they find their own space, safe space for themselves, there is no harm in it. If a trans individual I have seen, if they are going to the male washroom, they are being bullied. If a trans woman is going to the female washroom, they are saying, you are not allowed to come here. So where do this, uh, they go? Till date, we don't have gender neutral toilets in maximum places. If you see maximum airports, do not have a gender neutral toilets. In maximum places, hotels, they don't have a gender neutral toilets. So what is this? So we have to bring these changes. We need to talk about it and we need to make a society. If we need the safe space, if we need to bring the change, please bring from ourselves. Okay, so what are the uh, activities or groups or organizations that are working in this direction? So, so if anyone um, you know would interested can benefit out of it. See, there are several organizations uh, like Hamsafar Trust is one of the one which has been one of the oldest organizations working with the community, and I think now. It uh, gives me pleasure that there are so many states even uh, and who has their own organizations. Kerala has so I many a couple of organizations which have been working. I have individual friends who have been associated with the community works there. So 
now not only uh, only the metropolitan cities the two tier cities and even the small districts also having the organizations who are working for the community and people if they are having issue can surely reach out to them and if you want you can get in touch with me as well any point of time and you can many people if anyone has a, a thing to share or they want to get in touch with me they can feel free i can try to connect in whatever way possible okay and uh... venkatesh so this question i asked to everyone okay so what is happiness for you and what is happiness to me okay so happiness first of all is being myself it's if i am being myself that is happiness for me if i am separate that doesn't brings me happiness for me happiness is my family my mother my family because they are the one who really matters to me they have been the my backbone so for me my mother father my sister and my aunt these four members are the most happiness the, the, uh, my joy is from them because they have been there throughout my journey so i i always want they if they are happy i am also happy it's something like that and for me happiness is food my happiness is traveling i love to eat i love to travel so for me these are happiness rest everything see there are things ups and downs of course but for me food travel my family and myself that's only i i i, I want to <laughs> do it if i am anyway i am bored i just self pamper myself self pampering is like i have i have gone to buffets eating and going to buffets and i'm like a table for one and they are like okay you want to eat alone for two hours i'm like yeah why why there's no minute i want to self pamper myself because that gives me happiness i think i try to okay. do that that's so great to know uh, so venkatesh i hope and wish from my heart that you know what you're fighting for let that get all the required attention and let your community also be accepted just like the other other two genders in the society and uh, thank you for joining us and it has been a great pleasure speaking to you and uh, in fact seeing you <laughs> with the you know, know. with a happy sure. face and smile uh, thank you so much for inviting me over and was a really in, um, an honor to be here on live with you and wishing you all the best for your theater uh, uh, group <laughs> and hope to connect with you soon and see you sometime after this pandemic in kerala very soon yes sure and venkatesh yeah i forgot to ask hey, are you into any arts since we are I'm an artistic sure. group Um, okay. Many people say that okay, you, you are like you, you, you. One, one of the most famous, uh, like most common question which I get from everyone is, are you a dancer? Dancer, yeah. Yeah, so yeah but um, yeah, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Venkatesh. Thank you Thank for joining. Thank you so much. Namaste.